Gripen vs F-35 in NATO's Northern Front Why Rolls-Royce engines matter In the icy skies from Norway to the Baltic, NATO faces a battle not just of stealth or speed, but of control. The F-35 dominates with cutting-edge stealth, yet Sweden's Gripen raises a chilling question. Can engine independence outweigh stealth in Arctic warfare? When tensions flare in the frozen north, which fighter will truly rule the skies? And who decides the outcome? The Northern Front awakens. From the Arctic coastline of Norway to the steel-gray waters of the Baltic Sea, NATO's Northern Front has become one of the most closely watched regions on the planet. Once considered a quiet buffer of snow, sea, and silence, the area has transformed since 2014, when rising tensions reshaped Europe's security map. After Finland joined NATO in 2023 and Sweden followed in 2024, the Northern Air Corridor suddenly became a strategic air shield that stretches across Scandinavia, expanding NATO's reach deep into polar airspace. Why does this matter? Because the shortest air routes between Europe and the rival east cross directly over the Arctic Circle. The region's icy runways, unpredictable weather, and long periods of darkness demand aircraft that are not just powerful, but reliable, adaptable, and ready to scramble with little warning. In these conditions, the aircraft chosen to defend northern skies must do more than look good on paper. They must launch from remote highways, survive freezing temperatures, and intercept intruders before radar screens go silent. But as winter winds tighten NATO's northern grip, one question rises with the cold. Which fighter can truly command the Arctic sky? Stealth dominance or adaptable resilience? F-35 – NATO's Stealth Spearhead When NATO members began renewing their fighter fleets in the early 2010s, one aircraft emerged as the centerpiece of a unified air strategy, the F-35 Lightning II. Entering service in 2015, the F-35 wasn't just another jet. It was a flying data network capable of silently detecting threats long before appearing on enemy radars. Its fifth-generation stealth skin, integrated sensors, and real-time data fusion allow pilots to see without being seen, making it a natural leader in coordinated NATO missions across Norway, Denmark, the UK, Italy, and now Finland. In northern airspace, where long distances and early detection determine survival, the F-35's ability to share targeting information instantly with ground, sea, and air units becomes a force multiplier. It turns isolated fighters into a synchronized swarm. Every jet sees what one jet sees. This capability matters when patrols stretch across volcanic Icelandic airfields, Arctic coast radar gaps, and the deep fjords guarding northern Europe. But with its high maintenance demands, complex logistics, and dependence on tightly controlled U.S. components, critics ask whether the F-35 can sustain relentless cold weather operations without supply interruptions. So the question remains, is unmatched stealth worth the price of strategic dependence in northern skies? Gripen, the agile Nordic defender. While the F-35 projects power through stealth and networks, Sweden's JAS-39 Gripen was engineered with a different mission in mind, to survive, adapt, and fight with flexibility on home soil. First entering service in 1996, and later transformed into the advanced Gripen E variant unveiled in 2016, this fighter was shaped by Sweden's long tradition of preparing for fast, unexpected air conflicts in harsh northern conditions. What makes Gripen uniquely suited to the northern front? Unlike aircraft requiring large protected air bases, Gripen can launch from icy roads, short runways, and remote dispersal sites, then refuel and rearm in under 10 minutes with a crew of just six. In the Arctic, where bases may be targeted first, this mobility turns the environment itself into a defensive shield. The Gripen E's upgraded radar, electronic warfare suite, and beyond visual range missile capability give it the punch to challenge threats, while retaining operational costs far lower than fifth generation jets. Yet one debate follows the Gripen everywhere. If Gripen is so adaptable and modern, why have many NATO states still chosen the F-35? Is the issue performance, politics, or something hidden deeper like engines and industrial independence? Segment 4. When Strategy Meets Engines Beneath every fighter's wings lies a truth often overlooked in headlines and hype. 
An aircraft is only as independent as the engine that powers it. In NATO's northern front, where supply lines stretch across frozen seas and military decisions depend on international agreements, engines become more than mechanical heartbeats. They become strategic commitments. The source of propulsion influences who controls spare parts, who authorizes exports, and who decides when upgrades can be made. This is where the conversation shifts from Gripen versus F-35 to something more subtle. Control versus capability. The F-35's Pratt & Whitney F-135 engine, though unmatched in raw thrust and optimized for stealth, is bound tightly to U.S. export rules and maintenance pipelines. Nations flying it benefit from standardization, yet they also rely on external approval for engine repair, replacement, and future upgrades. Gripen, meanwhile, traditionally uses the General Electric F-414, but recent discussions and proposals highlight an alternative, partnering with Rolls-Royce to increase supply independence, reduce export restrictions, and enhance national involvement in engine manufacturing. So now the northern debate changes shape again. In a crisis where supply chains freeze, does the engine you depend on decide how long you stay airborne? Segment 5. Rolls-Royce the silent player in the sky. Few names in aviation carry the quiet authority of Rolls-Royce. Known for decades of pioneering aircraft engines, this British giant has powered everything from fighter jets to commercial airliners. But in the context of NATO's northern front, Rolls-Royce represents more than engineering prestige. It symbolizes strategic independence. While most attention goes to stealth, radar, or missiles, the engine can determine which country controls the skies and who controls the jets themselves. For Gripen, integrating Rolls-Royce components, or potentially full engines, could shift the balance. Instead of relying solely on US-controlled systems, nations like Sweden, Finland, or even Canada could maintain operational sovereignty. Maintenance, upgrades, and spare parts become local issues, not dictated by foreign contracts. Meanwhile, in the F-35 program, Rolls-Royce contributes to the lift system of the Stovial variant, F-35B, showing that even stealth dominance requires global collaboration. Yet this collaboration also ties operators to complex international agreements, limiting freedom in wartime scenarios. So as NATO plans patrols across Arctic fjords and icy straits, one question rises quietly, but urgently. Could the choice of engine, Rolls-Royce or not, Determine who truly rules northern skies. The F-35 dependency versus Gripen independence. Debate beyond stealth, radar, and weapons. The debate over F-35 versus Gripen narrows to a single, often hidden factor. Dependency. The F-35, with its advanced Pratt and Whitney F-135 engine, offers unmatched capabilities, but it also comes with strings attached. Nations operating it must follow strict U.S. protocols for maintenance, upgrades, and parts distribution. In a prolonged conflict, reliance on a single foreign supplier could slow sorties or limit readiness, especially in the unpredictable Arctic environment. Gripen, by contrast, offers flexibility in both operations and industry partnerships. Its design allows for alternative engines, including potential collaboration with Rolls-Royce, which could enable NATO allies to maintain jets without depending solely on U.S. supply chains. In practical terms, this means aircraft could stay mission-ready, even if geopolitical tensions interrupt global logistics. This contrast frames a deeper strategic question. Is it better to have a supremely capable jet tied to a foreign system or a slightly less advanced fighter that your nation can fully control? In the high-stakes northern skies, that answer could determine whether patrols remain continuous or falter when tension peaks. When Arctic airspace freezes over, will dependency cost more than capability? What happens when the snow falls? In the Arctic, winter is not just a season. It's a test of endurance, engineering, and strategy. Temperatures plunge below minus 30 degrees Celsius, runways become sheets of ice, and storms can appear with almost no warning. In these conditions, northern air operations are as much about logistics and reliability as raw firepower. The F-35, with its stealth coating and advanced avionics, performs impressively, but only if maintenance crews and supply chains remain uninterrupted. Even a minor engine issue could ground the fighter for days. Gripen's design philosophy 
shines in contrast. Short field takeoffs, cold weather readiness, and rapid turnarounds from dispersed airstrips allow it to stay airborne when other jets might be stuck in hangars. Its lighter frame and adaptable power plant mean that even under Arctic stress, Gripen can patrol, intercept, and redeploy swiftly. Yet the engine debate resurfaces. A jet is only as operational as its heart. If spare parts or repairs are delayed because of international dependencies, even advanced jets lose their edge. So the northern skies pose this chilling question. When snow and ice dominate the Arctic airspace, which fighter truly stays in the air and which one becomes a grounded observer? The future of NATO's air edge, Gripen, in contrast, offers a different vision. With potential Rolls-Royce engine integration and a philosophy of dispersed operations, it allows countries to maintain readiness independently of foreign oversight. Rapid deployments, remote base operations, and lower operating costs make it a resilient choice when environmental and political conditions strain supply chains. The battle for northern dominance is no longer only about speed or stealth. It is about who can sustain presence, maintain control, and react faster in a frozen, hostile environment. So the final question lingers. Will the future of NATO's northern skies favor cutting-edge stealth networks or adaptable independence powered by engines like Rolls-Royce? In NATO's northern skies, the Gripen vs F-35 debate isn't just about stealth or speed. It's about strategy, endurance, and independence. The F-35 dazzles with fifth-generation tech and networked power, but relies on foreign engines and supply chains. Grapen offers agility, Arctic readiness, and potential Rolls-Royce integration for sovereignty. So, which truly rules the frozen skies? Unmatched stealth or adaptable independence? Subscribe and share your thoughts, because in the North, every decision counts.